So, this is BSP, and I'm out here walking around George Miyoko Station, which is uh, actually a new area in George City. Uh, not the station. Well, the station is new for Shinkansen. Uh, they just basically just built up a bigger station to get the Shinkansen in. But uh, around this area, they have a lot of homes that have been built and big homes too. And I'm doing this, I'm calling this video today, how to get a home in Japan when you're living here. Now, if you look at this home right here, um, I know that this is fairly new. I don't think it was built, um, it's only been built like a little bit over a year, but it's a really nice looking house. And you can see it's very large. And you can see the grounds are, are large and everything like that. So, um, I, cause I noticed it the other day when, um, park here at George Bureau Station and you can see how big the yard is they have um, I saw the two, uh, two kids out here two kids out here playing soccer um, and the mom was hanging clothes outside um, so people are living a very comfortable life here in uh, Joetze I'm not gonna walk down here too far it's very hot um, I'm actually going to go back and then I'm going to um, switch off and switch back on. I just wanted to show you how big these homes really are out here. Um, there's another big home right there. There's a lot of big homes in this neighborhood. And of course, they have like apartment buildings and stuff too. And then right across the street is uh, George Miyoko Station. But um, yeah, I just wanted to come out here and show you. Look at this big lot right here. This is a really big lot. Um, as, as well as this one I just showed you. And a lot of homes you'll notice here in, I know in, in, in our prefecture and probably throughout Japan, they have this dark, darker color. It's very stylish because what happens is whenever it, it uh, a lot of the home, the older homes, when they, they get the rain running and the water over the years, it has this line, this rust line going from the middle of the windows down the side of the homes. It's very unsightly. So um, we just, that's why we also decided to get our house a darker color too. But it looks very nice, very modern. At first I thought, oh, dark color. I thought, you know, is it gonna be hot inside? No, that doesn't, no. It doesn't matter what color your house is on the outside here. Um, but th like you see, this, you look at this house. This is a really nice house. Um, and you know, our lot, we have a pretty big lot too where we build our home on. So I'm gonna probably have to some little kind of set up with some grass. I think that's that's not real grass to use though. I like real grass. I'm gonna have real real turf on my in my yard. I like I'm just a real turf guy. My son, he plays soccer and he says he prefers real turf, I mean real grass, so that's what we're gonna do. But like I said, this is this area is uh some homes are older, but this is a new area around 2012, 13. I think the Shinkansen started running around 2014 from George Miyoko Station and then it just started building up. Um, you'll see like some there's some there's a new like big apartment building over there. Some the hotels are new popping up here. Um and you know restaurants and whatnot. And then they're building like on the other side of this parking lot, parking garage here, they're building up um some uh you know another office building or whatever. But um Yes, I just wanted to show you what was going on out here. Now I'm going to switch up and then I'll be back in my car to talk to you about how to get a home in Japan when you're living here. And once again, as you can see, um, these homes here are pretty big. So I will switch out. So, yeah. So we're going to talk about how to get a house in Japan when you live here. The reason why I added that part on about when you live here is because things get a lot simpler when you're in Japan, when you're living in Japan. For example, when living in Japan, you can get a loan. Because like I said in some other videos, I, I highly recommend against paying cash for a home because homes in Japan depreciate. Um, and when you get a home in Japan, you don't want to think of Oh, like, in, it's not like in the U.S. or other countries where, okay, I'm going to get this house, it's going to grow in value, and I'm going to sell it in four or five years and make money. Uh, no. 
if you want to flip something, then you'd be better off buying an expensive condominium in Tokyo or Osaka in a really good location. You can do some flipping on those because those do appreciate a lot. But your home, like where we live and most parts of Japan, no. And so the reason why I'm putting this up here is because I really want people to know what, I go, what I've gone through. And like I said, this, this is all about my experience here in Japan. And home building is now, and land ownership is now part of my experience. I know I get people up here all the time. They're gonna they're gonna be someone that's gonna for every every um, every experience is always a, a, a different experience. Is what I want to say. So put what you want, say what you want, but I'm just going off of what I what I know. So the area I was in was around George Miyoko Station, which was at George Miyoko Station, which is our Shinkansen Station. Um, <clears throat> like I said, it's an area that has been rapidly building since 2012. A lot of people have built homes there. There's there's a nice big sunflower park there. So yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful location in the city. Now, so I showed you the, the a few houses. Um, there's a lot of homes that look they don't look the same, but they have that that nice clean look to them in Japan. A lot of homes here are actually custom built, like we're getting our home custom built. And I'm going to talk about oh, what I had to go through um, to get to where I'm at now. So let's go ahead and get started on this one. So two years ago, um, you know, I, like I said, I was talking to my um, my father-in-law about obtaining the land that he had an old house on that his father had turned over to him before he passed away. And then um, later that year, I started talking about uh, my wife and I. We said, "Look, why don't we just purchase some land next to it?" Because because I said, "You know what? I eventually would like to get a house built the same size as the one we have in the states or bigger." And I didn't think that was possible at first. And then you know, you know, it's like in Japan, you just can't go up to somebody and say, "Okay, here's money. I want your land." Because Japanese, no matter how much money you offer them, if they don't want to sell their land, they're not going to sell. You have to have ties there. So that was a phone call that needed to be made. Um, my father-in-law contacted the owner of the property next to the property that he owned. And so, um, you know, he did that and he told the lady about the connection and who was interested in the property. Of course, his daughter and, and his son-in-law. And that, you know, of course, he has ties to it. And then she recognized those ties, of course, because she know she knew who his mother and father were and his sisters. So um, make a long story short, that, that land deal was done last August and my father then switched over to his land in September to my wife and I which may now means we have we have a bigger lot which now means I am able to get a house built about the same size as the one I had in the U.S. so okay so what happened with all this is last is I was talking to the builder of course before this happened I, I, we secured a builder and we started talking to him two years ago and then um, I remember coming over at the end of December and he had put me in touch with a local bank here in, in Niigata, in Georgia City. And I showed them, you know, basically how I'm going to be making my money. And uh, they were kind of like, wow, that's, that's a lot of funds you're getting, man. That's a lot of money. You, you shouldn't have no problem building whatever you want here. And so um, in the summer of last year, I went back to the same bank with more solid proof this time, not just telling them what I made, but now I, I had solid documents on how I get my money, my investments and whatnot, and, and how much I was getting. And they were like, oh, and they, and they looked at a couple of documents and they went ahead and bam, pre-approved me. Now, they pre-approved me based on the condition that I get a permanent, that I have a permanent residency. And I had just moved to Japan. I was on a spousal visa, a one-year spousal visa. And, um, I thought that as soon as I landed in the country, I could start applying for PR, but that's not the case. And then I hired a lawyer this um, year, spring, and she told me what I need to do. So I went ahead and I, of course, I renewed my spousal visa. So now it's good for three years. And now I'm able to do my person, my permanent residence. I'm going to find more information on that on Monday because we have another meeting set with a lawyer. Okay. So anyway, I got pre-approved for the house, but that was on the condition of my permanent residence. 
So from, say, last summer up until the time I talked to my lawyer, which was like February, March this year, I didn't really know when I was going to be able to get my house built. We had, had the old house tore down, a lot set empty. We were still anticipating getting the house built this year. Um, initially, we had thought that we'd land, as soon as we land in the country, everything gets done. The house would have been built by April already. But like I said, I didn't have my PR, so that didn't work out. But when I was talking to my lawyer, my lawyer had mentioned that people are able to get home loans without using, I mean, without having a PR. And then we looked into that some more and we found the bank. We went ahead and sent over all my documents to them. The bank went ahead and approved me, not pre-approved, they approved me for um, a loan. And then they got all the documents. So basically what happens is, you before you look, I can't stress this enough, and I know there's been a few people that's been looking at houses and without getting approved. Before you start to look at a house or start to want to build a house, most people here will probably just look for a house to buy. Before you do that, you need to get approved. You need to know what your amount that, that you can afford because you if you're out there looking with a real estate agent, you're just dreaming because the real estate agent doesn't have a clue about what kind of loan you can get approved for. They're just going to show you whatever you want. Oh, I want to look at that. Okay, let's look at that house. And you're just walking around drooling and knowing and you'll never be able to get that type of house. So now here's the thing with, with getting your, your loan approved. So the banks, they work very close. So what we did was we put our builder in touch with our bank after we got approved. Reason being because the builder had to tell the bank what, how much the build is going to cost. Yes, they only finance the build in Japan. So, for example, they finance the build of the structure, get the whole house done. They finance that. They're not financing any upgrades or none of that. So, you know, like in, in the U.S., you know, they're, they're so happy to get you to throw stuff in the loans. Like, for example, when we bought our, our house in the States, we, you know, we, we watched it get built. We, we had um, the whole thing was they financed the whole thing, right? Whatever came with the house as you got it built whatever you you decided so but i did notice that upgrades a little bit different in japan but upgrades i i put them in like we had upgraded the dining room floor and we went ahead and paid cash for that but we could have put that in a loan also you can do like appliances in the states and you have the option of either paying cash or putting in a loan well in japan they don't give you that option so like anything that you want like we we did quite a bit, a bit of upgrades in our in our home um i'll give you one example for example we in most of the the, the, the large parts of the house we're going to have wood ceilings right so those aren't cheap but but i love the look i love it with the spotlights and everything in that so um i didn't pull any punches we didn't pull any punches when we got this when we get on this build so those upgrades are going to cost me quite a bit of money but like i said the the bank will not finance the upgrade. So what I'm trying to let you guys know is this. When you go into buying a home, you can't... It's not like in the States where you don't hardly have any money. Oh, you do, you're doing an FHA loan. you put putting 3.5% down. Okay, boom. Now you're going to get your home bill. No. When you got to understand in Japan is this. If you get approved for a build and you don't have any extra money, that's all you're going to have is that shell of a house. And you're going to have the bare minimum basic stuff in your basic walls, basic flooring, basic everything's basic, plastic sinks, you name it, or fa you know, faucets, you name it, your shit's going to be basic. And that's it. And if anything else you want to put in there, you're going to have to go out and get. So that's what I'm saying. When, when you get that, when you want to go build a house, you need to have a considerable amount of money. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry. A considerable amount of money put away. Yes, you need to have a considerable amount of money put away for your your home. And I don't mean parking that money in the stock market. And here's what I'm saying about that. Because a lot of people do that. A lot of people, what they do is they park their money in the stock market and then when they need it they pull it out well that is not the smartest thing to do because the market is cyclical it goes up and down and more than likely whenever you need to pull money out of there the timing's always bad the market's down maybe like your your portfolio might be down like 10 15 percent right 
So you go and pull money out, that's money you're never going to get back and you've already lost. So you need to plan this out. Don't just wake up one morning and say, okay, I want to get a house bill. Let's go talk to a, to a bank and get the, get the loan approved. No, you need to plan this out. You need to, 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 to have a considerable amount of money saved up for amenities and upgrades that you're going to put into your home is what you need. And then, then you go out and you get approved by your bank. Your bank says, okay, let's say you saved up about 20, 30,000 US dollars. You go out, you get approved for a home for say $200,000, the build. And then you now you got, you can play with upgrades because you got money to play with upgrades. And each month you're even saving more money every month. And then you turn your head, your upgrades about come to about $20,000. You have that money, you pay the cash because the builder's gonna want that. After the home gets built, the builder's gonna want that upgrade money. You pay that off, you're good, and you just finance and you build. That's how it works. All right, that's what I'm saying. That's why you need to make sure you have money saved up. Now, so what our, what our thing is, so this, so we got approved, like I said, in the spring, and then we started looking at upgrades. We we had to go look at um, this, um, like, fixture, like a cabinet kitchen, like cabinetry, kitchen sink, bathroom sink, um, you, uh, the toilets, you know, because on our home, we actually have 30 build, 30 contractors building our house. The builder and then you, 29 other contractors are working on our home. 20, 30 people, 30 different f companies are building our house. So we are employing people from 30 different companies. And they all have their, their piece and say and how things get attached and put into the home. So when you go through the process, it's going to be, you're going to be built, meeting with your builder a lot. Because you're going to go over everything. You're going to be choosing your pallet, your flooring, what kind of window frames you want in and outside your house, what kind of windows you like, uh, you know, like how, how do you want to set it up, what kind of toilet you want, what kind of, what, what, what's this, what size of you want your bathtub to be, what kind of bathtub you want, coloring, wall printing, you name it, you're going to be involved in the whole process. And like I said, it's took, taken my wife more than two years, my wife and I, more than two years to, to get this thing in motion. But And that's only because we were out of the country. If we were in country, it would have taken us about a year, meeting with the building and everything. So that's a, that's a whole process. And you'll be sitting there and you'll be like, oh, wow, this looks nice. I think I want that. They're not going to try to sell you stuff to get money. That's not how they work. But they are going to show you things. And they're going to say, look, this is, this is an option. This is what, then you say, well, option, well, what does it look like without the option? This would look like, and you're like, oh, you know, you may or may not feel comfortable. Now, if you're the kind of person, like I said, if you're just barely squeezing into that house, then you're not going to give a damn. But if you're like us, where you don't, where you don't really have to worry about money, you're going to get what you choose to get. And that's what we did. We're like, oh, no, I don't want that. I want this. I don't want that. I want this. I don't want that. I want this. We, we got to the point to where we were so involved in our home bill because we, I'll tell you about, about that more, but. We were so involved in our home build that we even altered our design. Yes, we designed our own home. My wife and I designed it. What we did was we saved, you know, when you buy a new home, when you get a new home built in the U.S., you can go to your local city office and they will have the, the uh, building plans. They keep them for anywhere from like up to six months. After that, they discard them. So we had gotten our house, and I heard about these building plans, and I went straight to the city office and said, hey, you have building plans for this home that was built? Yes, we do. I went ahead and got them. It's free. You get those building plans because that's for your house, and I took them home. I still have those building plans today. I have them in my apartment place that we're renting right now. They're in that place. So, all we, see, we liked our old design in the state so much that we sent that blueprint over to this builder, and then he looked at it and then he said, okay, yes, we can do this, but we're going to have to do this here because you got to make everything earthquake proof, of course, protect against earthquakes. So we liked all that. We made, we moved a couple things around. We, we changed the interior a little bit around the, the shape of the rooms and whatnot, but it's pretty much based off of the house we lived in before. And we just went off that design, but then we designed it how we want. We, we actually altered it like we wanted to. Like we really want to. You know how you live in a house and you're like, 
oh man, if I had my choice, I would have did this instead of that. That's what we did. And then the outside, of course, will look totally different from the house we had in the U.S. Totally different. We had a, a pretty much a country style house in the States, but this is going to be a modern, a contemporary modern house here in Japan. So that's that's why keeping those plans or getting those plans are important just in case you like that plan, but you you need to move somewhere else or choose to move somewhere else. And that's what we did. So, like I said, we, we were so busy. I mean, we were going there like at least two or three times a month to talk to our builder about this, that, that. Like I said, all the things, the palette, the design, choosing what kind of, um, even what kind of steps you want outside your house. Even choosing, like I said, you know, he gave us this thick book and it was nothing but um, wallpaper in there. Because in Japan, where they do it here is they they, 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 they um, stick the wallpaper on the wall and you can choose all kind of patterns like use white or gray or like you know beige or whatever you want to build use and so we we chose quite a few differences on ours in our house and we thought and this is funny because i thought we were done i thought okay we're done i'm we just a lot of work when the house is going to start getting built we knew the house is going to start getting built july of this year but that was back like in the late spring and we were like okay what else do we need to do well, we did have one more thing to do. We had to go see the curtain person, the window dresser, if you will. So basically, um, like our, our house, I, the last I checked, I think we got like like 26, 27 windows are going to be on our, our new house. And so um, not every window is going to need curtains, but most of them will need curtains and blinds. So we, we chose every single curtain and blind for each and every room that needed them. And, and my son, like my son's bedroom, is going to have two windows. Our bedroom is going to have three windows. Because we even have a window, going to have a window in the walk-in closet. Um, you know, the guest bedroom is going to have, you know, two two window sides. I mean, it's it's just crazy. But it's so many different things, so many um, things we needed to do. So we had to choose that. We had to choose the colors and everything. I'm like, wow, it's a lot of work. And it was. It was a lot of work. But in the end, what I liked about this whole experience on getting the house built in Japan is that the builders, you were in full control. Me, my wife and I were in full control of what we wanted. We, we, we talked about it every night. We talked about this. We talked about that. And then we see the builder, and sometimes we alter something. We said, "No, we don't want this. We don't alter that. We don't want that." Like we did a big alteration on the house because we want. We have a big leather sofa that we like. It's an L shape. And we really like it. It's, it's a contemporary leather sofa that we picked up right before we left the States. So we wanted to get our bed, our living room kind of extended more to accommodate that. So they did that for us. And then they even extended the room sizes upstairs. They moved, they moved the closet positioning, like, you know, sliding closets in the rooms to a different spot. And now at, upstairs at the end of our hallway, we're going to have another window. And, you know, at the end of that instead. Before, it would have been just like a boom, a stop. And because that would have been running into my son's closet in his room. But now we moved that closet off the hallway side and now it's going to be window. And I like that way better because I just didn't feel comfortable walking right into a, um, to a, a, just a no space. And then boom, I want windows. I like a lot of light. And that's, that's what, why we did that. So these are little things that I'm saying that you will do. And so, but that adds to your upgrade or to your build or whatever. So that's why I'm saying you need to make sure you have the funds going in to support anything that you choose to get otherwise you you're not going to be able to, to get your house built like you want and the reason why it's so worth having that money is because you're only going to do this once like i'm not going to do this again i'm only going to do this once because this is my last house this is the, I'm, I'm not moving i'm going to this this is where we we're going to live and because we have ties to that land we have ties my wife's family has owned that land before her over almost 65 years her, when her grandfather bought that land and built that house by hand, he built this house by hand, and it was well built. Is what the guys were saying when it was tore, when it was tearing it down. I said, "Damn, this, this house is well built." And I seen, it, I watched, it, I videotaped the, the whole thing. Every day, I videotaped the whole thing, and I'm tearing the house down. And I saw some really good wood come out of that, out of that, the framing and whatnot. So, so it's different from say, with us having ties to the community, it's going to be different for you. And that's why I always recommend when you want to get a home, you get a home in your wife's, if you, especially your Japanese wife's 
area where she's from. Because that's going to make things so much easier on you and her going forward. It's going to make some things so much easier. Now, you do have people in Tokyo who, like my, my, my in-laws, they live in a condominium. Nobody cares about each other. They could care less. Nobody says nothing to you. You don't say nothing to them. You just go about your business. They don't even know who their neighbors are. And they've been there over 10 years. You see what I'm saying? So, so it's, but it's quite different when you own a home out here in the city, in the community, and you, you must not, not, you, not, you, you, you can, you must communicate with your neighbors because you're going to be sharing the recycle facilities, the local recycle facility in your neighborhood. You do, you know, once a month, you're going to get the, the task of cleaning that. You have to, they're going to drop that bucket and cleaning thing off right at your place. And then you clean and you pass it on to the next person on the list. That type of thing. You check everything off. Yes, that is a responsibility. I am a member of a community here in Georgia City. I get the, the responsibility as well, too. So that's why I recommend you you buy a place or get a place where your spouse is from. Now, if you're not in that situation, if you are, say, married to a non-Japanese, neither one of you are nationals Japanese, but you're able to live in Japan, then that's a different story. But then if that's the case, before you get that house in that area, you need to do your research on the area as much as you can. But regardless of how you you get your house as far as when you live in Japan, whether it's through, whether it's if you're married to a Japanese or not, you still need to plan and you still need to make sure you have a lot of funds readily available in the bank. Because they're gonna be always asking you, hey, we need we need like X amount of yen for this, we need X amount of yen for that. Like, you know, for example, we need this much yen to turn your water on, this much yen to turn the electricity on so we can start working on the home. They always need something, but those things are necessary. And then guess what? At the end of when everything gets built, like us, we're going to get that money all back that we had to pay out for the electricity and for the, the water. Our city's already approved us. They can give it back to us because they appreciate that we took an older house off the market, tore it down, and it was an abandoned, not just old, it was an abandoned home. And now we build a new home that's going to make the city look better, and we're going to be living in it. It's going to be livable. And the city is in love with that. So, so that that's how that works here. I mean, everybody's city may be different. Osaka may not give a shit, or you know, or Saitama or whatever. But every city is different. It just depends on how they want to attract people to move to the city. That type of thing. So, another thing you you want to do. So, um, you want to make sure that you have a viable a viable way to move your funds from your country to Japan. Yes. Because when you, and I, like I said, living in Japan, because what I mean by living in Japan, I mean you're able to get health care. You're able to open up a Japanese bank account. Because, you, of course, you'd be dumb as hell if you don't have a Japanese bank account. You need that Japanese bank account because when you get your home built and you start paying your mortgage, you can pay your mortgage from that Japanese bank account. See? You can, you can just have it automatically deducted from that account every month. It's easier that way as opposed to going overseas and worrying about exchange rates. Get them to deduct from your local bank here in Japan. That's the easiest way because it's going to make your life a heck of a lot simpler. Trust me. Because the thing is this, is you're, you, so, so you need to understand how to move or figure out a way, and it is doable. I do it all the time, to move money from your U.S. bank to Japan. Now, there's an app out there called Wise. I use Wise. And, yeah, they, they charge you fees, but the fees are not expensive at all. And, they, and they're fast. They're quick. Or you can go through, like, you know, if you happen you know, have, like, a credit union or something, the credit union will charge you $25 no matter how much you, or at least that's what one of the credit unions I used. They charge $25. bucks. i am not going to go into all the names of all the banks I use. But they, my credit union charges $25. No matter how much amount I want to move, but it takes them two weeks. Me personally, I don't like the inconvenience of that. I like to have my money moving like within out, oh, boom, boom. And I've used at, like when I bought my car, I moved money from my bank account, one of my banks in the U.S., to the Bank of Japan. Actually, I went, I sent that money directly to the the dealership's uh, bank to, to to pay for the car, and that was quick. That was like with, with well the way I did it. I think it was went through Swift. It was within like three days, and it was over a weekend. That's why I seen like it took longer. And boom, they had their money. So like I sent it on a Friday, 
morning, and they got their money like Monday morning. It was that quick with Sprint. Now, if it wasn't that much, boom, it would be, it would have been there within like minutes. See, so they have a certain amount of how they work. If it's over a certain amount, it's considered swift. It takes longer. If it's below a certain amount, it's going to get there quicker. That's how it works. Yeah. So, like I said, you just need to figure out what is more accommodating for you, what's more comfortable for you, and how you move your funds around between the U.S. and Japan or other countries. Why it works in all different languages and countries. So, like, I can move if I I can move money. Even if I don't have a bank account, like if I have somebody living in Germany, I want to give them money. They just give me their bank information, like their SWIFT number and whatnot, letters. And then I say, okay, I want you to send this money to that bank. And then, bam, they'll have it. It's like Western Union used to be. So, same thing. Same thing with WISE. Only I think WISE is a little bit quicker. All right? So, that's what I'm saying. You want to know. You want to make sure. Another thing is, when you do start looking at buying a home. Now, here's a tricky thing. Because they haven't really taken much money. See, I didn't even know about this. I thought, okay, well, I was like, okay, but I kept asking my wife at every meeting, okay, when they need the money, when they need the money, when they need Because America, we used to like paying for stuff before it gets started. You know, this, that, the other, except for a home loan, of course. But we used to paying for like all these little incidentals, right? Well, a lot of these little, like these upgrades, the guys, they, they said, we don't need your money until after the home get built. So that means you got more time if you need to, to accumulate more funds. So let's say that, that you know that you've done about $10,000 worth of upgrades and you got the $10,000 right now and, they, and then your house is not going to get built until December. Well, guess what? Keep investing that money. And then another thing is, tricky thing is too is you don't want to pull all your money from your U.S. bank account and dump it into your Japanese bank account because Japanese bank accounts, they don't make any money. They're not, they're not making any interest hardly at all. You'd be better off making interest on the money you got in the U.S., and then about a few weeks or whatever, when you get the word that, hey, we need your money, then you can start moving it to do the WISE account to your Japanese bank. And within days, you got the money you need. And then you can go ahead and wire that money to whoever bank needs that money for you on the bill, which is what we're going to do. That, yeah, that's how it works. Okay. Because you, 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 you're not, I'm not going to waste my money, like I said, in a Japanese bank. I'm just not going to do that. I want my money working for me, collecting interest as much interest as, I, interest as I can get, and then I will send it over to Japan. All right, so I'm not going to send any money until December. <laughs> so anyway, that's that's what it's about. That's what it's like. Um, when you get your, when you get, like I said, I'm getting my home built now, and we have a ceremony tomorrow for the carpenters who, who just started. In fact, today I drove by a saw. They already had put the, the post up going up to the second floor already they had the they laid the first floor and now they got the second floor post going up so i guess they're gonna do the outside first and then start doing the second floor i don't know how that works um everybody does it different so yeah it's a, it's a really smooth process though all you have to do is when you get when you get a home in japan is make sure you have your doc your documents in line make sure that you have all the income proof of your income from value viable sources this is what i'm making this is how i make my money once you show them that and then you sh you show them that you can live in japan you know and you're living in japan legally not that you can live but you're living in japan legally you have no problem getting your loan approved yep but like i said get it approved first before you look for a house that way you will know what your funds are looking like and what you will need to get your home all right so this is bsp on how to get a home in Japan when you live here. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out.